event in the whole gaming industry exists because of your contribution. So how do you feel uh, looking how much it has changed, changed over the decades? I'm very proud, first of all. I think that uh, what I see when I look around are fans and a lot of happiness. And uh, what could be a better reward than to make millions of people happy? Is there a game that has a special place in your heart? Well, of course, I'm known as Mr. Pitfall, <laughs> even though I have published um, around a hundred games. Um, so I have to say, I, I guess Pitfall has a special place in my heart. It it created a new way to think about video games. At the time, you would play your game on a single screen, like with asteroids. You know, you, you see the asteroids fly around. Well, when they fly off the top of the screen, they come onto the bottom of the screen. You know where they're going to go. You never leave that screen. When I did Pitfall, it created a situation where you could go screen to screen to screen, and the world could be as big as you want the world to be. And there were a lot of games after that, like Super Mario Brothers, and, and at least hundreds, if not thousands, of games very much like Pitfall. So, you know, I consider Pitfall to be one of my greatest accomplishments because of all of the other games that were created afterward. When you co-founded Activision, um, one of the uh, reasons behind it was to give um, game designers more, more recognition. Uh, more than 30 years later, do you feel that your idea has been achieved? Well, at the time, a game was made by one person. One person made the idea, uh, wrote the program, did the art, did the sound effects, did the music. That was all done by one person. So it was very easy at the time to say, this is the author. This one person is the author. The problem is there are 300 people making game, one game now. So there are only a few people who make such a great difference to the game that you, you hear of them as the one designer. And when you were talking about your book, uh, the Finding the Next Chief Jobs, you mentioned how companies uh, should hire more eccentric people, the weird ones. Uh, do you think that's something that's lacking in the video game industry? No, I, I actually think we have a lot of eccentric people in the, ga in the game business. Um, and I actually think that's one of the reasons it's so vibrant, because there's a lot of wacky things going on, and some of them are really cool. I think that the rest of the industries could look at the video game industry and learn a lot. Besides the weird ones, what do you think the other industries could uh, gain from the video game? Well, I think games have broad appeal. I've always been unhappy that games aren't a bigger part of our school system. Uh, games have been shown to teach people faster and better than just a classroom. And the politicians and, uh, don't seem to understand the power of game technology. You think that people, uh, young people nowadays, could like build the entire uh, learning system through video games? I know they can, and in fact, I believe every elementary school kid should be playing Warcraft or Minecraft at least, you know, an hour a day. I think there's more learning going on in that game than you ever can get in school. In of all the games that you work on, is there any any of this that is especially uh, memorable development? Well, you could say that all of them were my babies. So I have to love them all. <laughs> um, but with every game, there is something special about it. Um, I did a game called Grand Prix, and I'm very proud of the technical way that the cars were made to be very colorful and very large. You know, there's something about every game that, that was very special and that I'm proud of. How is the key point to always being one step ahead in terms of 
é technology? I try to keep up with sort of what's going on, but I also like to read science fiction and I try to imagine what the future that I want to live in is like. And uh, as a famous person once said, if you want to live in the future, the best way to do it is by inventing it yourself. And oh, what kind of science fiction do you usually read? Oh, I read a lot of it. Um, I mean, I think uh, Neil Stevenson does some interesting work. I, I loved uh, Ready Player One that, that uh, is coming out as a movie. I think that um, what science fiction does is allows you to kind of unstick your mind into what is versus what can be. And everything that you are irritated about, you should try to change. Like right now, if I lived in São Paulo, I would be irritated about traffic jams. So understand that when we have self-driving cars, the traffic jams will go away. Ah! Ah! Put me back for me controlling! Being a pioneer in the industry, you must have a lot of curious or, or funny stories. Can you share just, a, just one with us? Well, a lot of people always ask, where do ideas for video games come from? And I was at a trade show, very much like BGS, but I was in the bus going from the hotel to the trade show. And I looked out the window and there was a man trying to cross 10 lanes of traffic. Now he did that because it was less expensive to park on this side of the road than on that side of the road. So he, he risked his life to save a few dollars of parking. And I commented to the person sitting next to me, there's an idea for a video game. And in fact, after that trade show, I went back and I created the game Freeway, which turns out to be two chickens trying to cross 10 lanes of traffic. And you are working on a new way to play VR games. Um, could you uh, tell a bit more of, about this project? I believe that VR right now is at the stage where it's really, really good in amusement parks and arcades and public spaces, where you can come in and you can play, pay a little bit for a few minutes of play and, uh, and get an out-of-this-world experience. Uh, and we made a Pong game that you can now play Pong in VR, where you are the paddle. And it's really fun. And we just completed one where it's called Ghost Manor, and you are in this haunted house that's really creepy, and you get scared. But see, in this case, you're moving around in the VR world, so it feels normal and, and, and real, and that's fun. Can you give a little advice for people, uh, indie developers? My advice, if you are interested in making a game, is to make a game. It's not that expensive. You can download Unity, you can download, there are a lot of other tools, and just start working. If you are a programmer, find a friend who's an artist. If you're an artist, find a friend who's a programmer, and you get together, and you make a game. And in fact, if you make the game and finish the game, you can publish the game. These days, you can self-publish, right? If you only sell one to your mother, you've still sold a game, right? <laughs> you've become a published game developer. So just do it, publish it, and see if you like doing it. What are the changes that changes that you want to see in the industry in the next few years? I always want to see more innovation and uh, I want to see some games a little bit like Pokemon Go in which your world is part of your play field uh, but with a richer gameplay. Uh, Pokemon Go didn't have 
it, it wasn't really fun. It was just running around and collecting. I think that there needs to be a game that uses your environment more than just collecting, that it's actually you're solving puzzles or challenges. And uh, maybe even doing good. You know, that could be fun. The mobile platform was a bit of a revolution. Instead of having the computer at home and a big TV, you now had a, a game console as powerful as a PlayStation in your hand that you could take with you. So uh, we've seen, you know, mobile games have changed the industry a lot. Do you think that someday you can have like a VR in the real world, like not just on the cell phone, like seeing things like a Pokemon Go, like just the initial videos? I think everything is possible. And, and the part that I like about the future is it will make the future more interesting than it is today. And uh, the only thing that you need to worry about is whether in fact we're in base reality now. We could be jacked in somewhere and that this is all an illusion. 